Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chat, and I'm shooting this on new GoPro Hero 10 Black, including the built-in mic, so you can get an idea of the audio quality, and it's also at 5K60, one of the new resolution and frame rate options. So there's a ton of stuff I want to show you about this, except this video very nearly didn't happen. It almost went disastrously wrong. So this is the Hero 10 Black, and as part of this review package, GoPro also sent this remote control speedboat, which is equal parts awesome and also terrifying. In fact, taking a, well, few liberties with central London bylaws, I snuck down to the edge of the Thames to give this thing a proper test, and holy moly does this thing go! So this is being shot at 4K60, with HyperSmooth 4.0 boost enabled, and also with the linear field of view. And considering how bumpy the river and the boat is, it's doing a remarkable job of staying smooth. And also you can see, bar the odd bit of dirt or sand, there are very few water droplets on the lens, which is actually one of the upgrades. So far so good then. Well, except for that, but at least I got it back. Now this time, still a 4K60, but with horizon leveling turned on, which, well, as it says on the tin, locks the horizon, now up to a 45 degree angle, up from 27 degrees on last year's Hero 9. Gunning it towards the city, it's all buttery smooth, even if that hydrophobic lens has picked up some of that beautiful brown Thames water. But then things took a turn. Literally. In the middle of the Thames, it capsizes, and my heart sinks. The GoPro and the boat, all of my footage. Uh, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to tell GoPro I wouldn't be making a video. After a good half hour or so and the wake of a few boats going past, it drifts back to shore, and my completely on purpose 30 minute underwater test was successful. So what's new with the Hero 10 Black, aside from this snazzy new blue coloured font? Well, the star of the show is the brand new GP2 chip, and it's the first new processor we've had in the GoPro since the 6 back in 2017, and it's twice as fast. Side by side, you can really see just how much snappier the interface is. It really does feel like you're using your phone now rather than a laggy action cam. And even the front screen's smoother now thanks to a higher frame rate. But most importantly, GP2 also doubles the frame rates we can shoot in. So we now have 4K at 120, 5.3K at 60, and 2.7K at 240fps. We also now get HyperSmooth 4.0, which isn't significantly different to 3.0 last year, except it works at the higher resolutions and frame rates. There's also that improved horizon leveling, the cameras had a bump up to 23 megapixels from 20, and you can now pull out up to 19.6 megapixel stills from your 5K video, which again is up from 15.8 last year. So across the board, we're looking at more detailed photos and screenshots, and higher frame rate video. Now in terms of actual picture quality, I don't think an awful lot has changed when you're in good light, but as you guys know, the one thing that GoPro struggle with is low light performance. So with a new chip, uh, we have new advanced tonal mapping and also 3D noise reduction. So hopefully a little bit less noisy as you're watching this than the lighting changes, uh, but probably not a night and day difference in terms of actual video quality. 
on the outside, there's now a policy of no licking, uh, because as I mentioned earlier, the Hero 10 has this new lens cover with hydrophobic glass. It is still removable if it breaks, uh, but GoPro says not only is this even more scratch resistant than before, but the water shedding glass helps stop droplets from obscuring the lens, something GoPro users used to lick the lens to help prevent before they took it in the sea. It does seem to work most of the time, but sand and dirt can still get in the way. But visually, you'd be hard pressed to tell this apart from the Hero 9, because aside from, well, the number and that blue font, oh, and the fact that it's 3% lighter, you can't really tell. We get the same front and back screens, the same slightly finicky pull down release for the battery and micro SD card slot, although batteries are interchangeable, so you can use your old ones with this. And then there's these pull down thingy majigs for mounting attachments, and it does support all the mods for the Hero 9, including the Max lens. But I do just want to show you this horizon leveling again, where you can tilt the roll of the camera, because Hypersmooth does a great job at keeping everything, well, smooth, but eliminating the roll with horizon leveling really makes a difference. So the Hero 10 gets the usual three modes, photo, video, and time warp, and on screen you can tap to go back to real time whenever you like, and then resume the time warps, so you can get some really cool effects. The UI and the menus are pretty much the same as before, although I do appreciate that they've rejigged the default camera settings a little bit, so you don't really need to mess around with ProTune anymore in my experience. The only tweak I'd suggest is changing the bitrate from medium to high. We still get all the smart capture modes, like Hindsight, which captures 30 seconds of video before you hit record, Live Burst for taking a bunch of photos one and a half seconds before and after your shot, and also now Scheduled Capture lets you set the time and record up to 24 hours in advance, and then helpfully Duration Capture lets you select for how long you want it to record. But you will want to download the GoPro Quick app. It'll suggest you subscribe to GoPro for automatic uploads and that tiny be live streaming, but mostly I just use it as a remote viewfinder for the camera, which is free and much easier to frame a shot on this rather than the back of the GoPro. But in the Quick app, you can also update the software and adjust all the settings, including what you want the front screen to show. Another new feature of the Hero 10 is the ability to auto-upload your day's footage to the cloud as soon as you plug it into charge via the USB-C port. You can also wirelessly transfer it via the app, or plug it into your phone directly, and actually these are 30 and 50% faster respectively on the Hero 10. Or of course you have the good old-fashioned way of just popping out the microSD and plugging it into your PC, probably via an adapter. Okay, so uh, future Tom jumping in here because uh, I had originally uh, scripted and uh, made some notes about battery life and also uh, some conclusions about the Hero 10, which I'm shooting this on now. But I've come across a bit of a problem because I wanted to test the battery life of the Hero 10 because GoPro say it's um, comparable to the Hero 9 unless you're using one of the more high performance modes like 5K60 or 4K120, in which case it's a little bit less. Um, but actually my tests uh, over a 20 minute 4K60 recording, the Hero 9 uh, actually had 73% of its battery remaining versus 61 on the Hero 10. So that was uh, a noticeable downgrade in battery even in the same camera modes. But actually I've come across a bigger problem, overheating, because I cannot get this Hero 10 to run longer than about 23 minutes. Um, before it overheats and just shuts down. I've tried it at 4K60, at 5K30, on three different uh, batteries. So I reached out to my friend Tommy from Gadgets Boy, who is also testing the Hero 10, uh, and I got him to... So there's a couple of things here. Firstly, this is a pre-release model, or at least it's a, a non-final software. I'll put the software number below. So that is something that maybe can be fixed with an update. But I also shared my findings with GoPro to see if they had any thoughts. And to be honest, they didn't really have a good answer. They told me that they don't recommend recording on the highest settings in a static environment, as that's where overheating is likely to happen. But even at 2.7K60, which is some way from being the highest settings, after just over 20 minutes, it shuts down. Surely there is something wrong here, and maybe it's worth holding off buying. But then again, it could be an easy software fix or just an issue with these pre-release models, uh, in which case this whole uh, section of the review you could just ignore and you can carry on buying your Hero 10. 
So bear that in mind, but let's now go back to my original video and my wrap up. So how much? Well, the 10 Black will cost you $500 or 400 if you have the GoPro subscription, but considering that costs 50 pounds, you may as well get that first and then buy the discounted uh, Hero 10 Black. Of course, you can still buy the 9 and the 8 for uh, lower prices. I think the 9 is definitely still worth considering if you're not that bothered about the higher frame rates, the, the improved horizon leveling, and also uh, the faster UI. If you can live without that, the Hero 9 is probably a better value option. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy one of these? And also, what do you think is still missing that you'd like to see in the 11? Let me know in the comments below. Cheers for watching, guys. I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.